we started soccer. Okay. Um, I was around five when I started playing, and funny fact, I only started because my mom was my coach. I made her become my coach. She's right over there. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't play unless she was my coach. I was too scared. Um, what country do you get most excited to play against? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, probably France because um, I have a lot of old teammates there and friends, and I mean they're an incredible opponent. So I love playing against them. Okay. Um, did you just play soccer growing up, or did you play other sports? I played other sports and I was terrible at all of them. <laughs> no, I played uh, softball, <laughs> um, basketball. I ran track. Um, but they slowly got knocked out after I pretty much put all my passion into soccer. If you weren't playing soccer, what would you be doing? I've always said that I wanted to be a tennis player, <laughs> and I think I would be a good one, but everyone else disagrees with me, but I would have to be doing another sport, I, yeah. Who were, you, who were some of your role models? Um, obviously, my parents are my support system and I look up to them so much and my brother as well. Um, a big role model for me was actually Tim Schultz, our president, and um, you know he he really dug into me and, and, and motivated me to become the player I am today. And he was just the most one of the most impactful people in my life and I I thank him so much for that. What was the most important step you took to get where you are today? Wow, good question. Um, I honestly think it would, you know, in my early career, it would probably be um, when I started training more on my own with older teams, with boys, boys teams. Um, that was a huge step for me. I got, I got knocked off of one of the early national teams, and I was so, so sad and, and knocked down. And, um, I think that was that was huge for me, and then obviously, I think my move to France um, and bypassing college was one of the best decisions for me, and it's it's been huge for me and with the national team and, and being a professional. Um, what are some of the lessons you learned? Um, to never be content with where you are. Um, you know, I've. I've been on a roller coaster ride through my whole career. Um, so many ups and downs, so many times I'm starting, I'm on the bench, so I'm playing a lot of minutes, I'm not, I get injured, I'm back on the field, I'm healthy. There's going to be ups and downs in everyone's careers, and you just don't know when they're going to come. And, you know, it's there was a certain period of time where I was very content where I was, I was comfortable, I was playing every single game, and, and then all of a sudden you're out of the lineup and you, you just never can be comfortable you are and you always always want to get better and that's something that I've realized over the last two years. I, I've always known this but it kind of was you know eye-opening in the last few years so that's something I could say to everyone. Um, if you could pick one celebrity to spend a day with Ooh. who would it be and why? Um, Robert Downing Jr. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lionel Messi. Probably Robert Downing Jr. because he speaks English. Um, but I would love to hang out with Messi for a day just to kick the ball around with him. That'd be, that'd be nice. Do you have a professional mentor? In, in soccer? Or? Yeah. I, I would like to think uh, Tim, Tim Schultz was always my mentor. Um, actually, a lot of coaches that I grew up uh, training with were always my mentors. I like to think it's my mom as <laughs> my mentor as well. Um, just giving me the best advice as, as possible and um, always helping me through my journey. Um, which team, Portland or the national team, do you like to play with? <laughs> that's, that's hard. Um, I'm honestly, I'm just grateful to be in both teams and, and to play for both teams. Um, any minutes I can get, any time on the field I can get, I'm, I'm truly so grateful. And, and it, both teams, you're, it, it's very different. Portland, it's you know that's my club team. That's that's my you know my second home now and kind of my family. And 
we've grown so much in the last two years, and I absolutely love it there. And then you look at the national team, and it's it's the most incredible thing to say that you can represent your country, and I can represent you know Colorado Rush and my family and, and my home city. It's it's remarkable. How do you think your USA team will do in their upcoming matches? I hope we win. <laughs> um, you know, we're kind of in uh, this cycle now that we're rebuilding the team. Um, we just came off of a very hard loss against Sweden in, in the Olympics, and now you know we're looking forward to the World Cup, and that's in two years from now. So this whole new cycle is, is a rebuilding process, and um, yeah, I, I always hope we do well, but we're trying to improve and get better and, and see different players. What is your best and worst song? Um, my best song. Honestly, I still, I've never been so happy when, uh, oh, there's two, um, my club team, Colorado Rush, I can't remember how old we were, but we won regional championship, and everyone in the club doubted us, like, I think everyone was against us, no one thought in the world that we would ever win this regional championship, and we did, and I think we went into that tournament, and we lost the first game 3-1, to one, and everyone was like, we're done, like, I don't, I don't think people came to our, our second game. That's how bad it was. Um, and we got better and better, and we ended up winning, and it, it was the coolest thing. That's Antonio Lamb, which I'll tell you. Um, and then actually playing here last year in Denver, um, in front of the home crowd, in front of you guys, one of the best experiences of my life. And I think one of the most difficult was, was going to the Olympics and, and losing against Sweden and being knocked out. Um, Obviously, it was the coolest thing being at the Olympics and getting that experience, but um, it still it still hurts in that way. How did you begin to plan for your professional soccer career? I didn't have any plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did I? I mean, when I was when I was going overseas to um, to play pro for the first time, I really it was kind of a split decision. Um, I got off the contract from Lyon and took a whole year to decide whether I was going to do it or not and finish out my high school, uh, high school career. Um, and, and then it was kind of a split decision. I didn't, I didn't really have a lot of preparation. It was, you know, I, I was still training here and playing with my club team and, and working hard and, and then going into it I didn't know what to expect. So I really can't say I had planned for it. Um, I was just excited to go and see what was to come. What is your favorite thing to do when you come back to Colorado? Um, see family, see friends. Honestly, one of the coolest things for me is to come back here. It's not just for the video, but um, coming back to my youth club that gave me so much. Um, the coolest thing for me to see all you guys, to see um, young players improving and working to, to be you know, where I am today and, and wanting to be professional athletes, wanting to go to college and do all these things. It's so cool for me to come here and, and see all you guys and see all my old coaches and friends. And, um, yeah, it's, it's truly so, so amazing for me. Do you think playing other sports to help your skills as a soccer player? And I wasn't great at other sports. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, no, that kind of count. <laughs> um, a little bit. I I would say you know growing up with my older brother Michael, we would um, I, I looked up to him a lot. He was good at everything, every single sport that we played. He was so good at it, and I would try to compete with him, and it was uh, it was a shot in the dark. And there was no chance. Um, but um, yeah, it was great for me. I think that contributed to how physical I am today because I had to go up against my older brother and, and he really toughened me up a lot. Um, what was the coolest stadium you've played in? Um, honestly, my, my home stadium in Portland is the best atmosphere I've ever had. I mean, national team games, we can, we can bring big crowds, but our stadium, we get, we average 18,000 a game, and no one, no one else can say that, and I will brag about it all the time, because it's the coolest thing for women's sports, and, um, you know, every, no matter what, if we're losing, we're winning, we're tying, the support is there, and the fans are cheering, and it's the coolest thing everywhere come out to a Portland game.
Do you have any pre-game rituals or anything specific you do to prep for a game? I do have a pre-game ritual that is a secret that I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if we become better friends one day. Um, do you speak any other languages? <laughs> um, yes, I'd like to say that I speak French. Um, it's slowly gotten worse as I left there. Um, I have a French teammate that I try to keep up with. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll just say yes. How did you stay focused and not get too nervous? I still get nervous. Um, that, that's who I am and, and coming to big games like this, I, I always have nerves and I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, these are important games and, and you know, you're playing at the highest level, you're, you're a professional athlete, it's, it's normal. And I know a lot of players don't get nervous, but uh, we're all different. So um, I don't think it's a bad thing, but once, you know, you step on the field and, and you're playing, they all go away, and you just go out there and, and do your best and, and try to win. What do you think is the most important skill to improve yourself in the game? Uh, for me, I think it's very important to, to watch soccer. Um, <laughs> it's so easy to do, to sit down and watch um, some of the best players in the world play. And, you know, I'm speaking off the field right now, but that's truly what helped me. And I can say uh, Tim was actually the one that, that told me to go watch <coughs> Lionel Messi when he first uh, started playing for Barca when he was 17. And, I mean, people knew about him, but now he's, he's a big name. So, you know, once I started watching that, I, I watched the whole, whole team, and, and they're incredible. And that's, you know, I saw the game differently because of how they played. And I think... Uh, <laughs> that it's such a different learning process and I try to tell everyone that you need to go watch soccer and, and don't just watch the women's game, watch watch men, watch European men um, because they're the best in the world and and I, I think that will help so much and and not just watching for fun, not just watching to see who wins, it's, it's really studying your position and players and, and what they do, what they do off the ball and, and that's what's really helped me. What are some of your goals? Ooh. Um, <clears throat> they're always changing. Um, short term, uh, I want to. I want to win our NWSL season. Um, we just clinched playoffs and we got a home playoff, so we're going into a semifinal October seventh, and hopefully we win that. We go to the final, and, and that's my short term goal, goal right now as a team. Um, individually, you know, I want to keep improving, getting better, and, and I want to make that World Cup qualifying roster that's in a year from now, almost a little over. And, and yeah, just to, you know, I have little ones here and there that's more like technical, tactical, things like that, but a lot of goals. What is your pregame meal? Pregame meal. Um, I changed it up a little bit. I used to be a, a pancake person, um, but... I got rid of pancakes. Um, I usually um, got eggs, eggs with toast, a little guac, not guac, all the time. Runny eggs, it, it makes it nice. Do you Try see it. any differences between your professional team and the national team? Yeah, I think uh, every team plays different, you know, and it's. Uh, it's a higher level here with the national team. It's the best players in, in the country coming together and playing. Um, nothing to take away from, from Portland, but we play different. And I think uh, <clears throat> for Portland, we try to play this, this really cool style of play where we're, we're knocking it, we're combining, we're, we're trying to play really good soccer and, and get the end result. And it's, it's hard in the end of yourself. It's so physical, so so many athletes. and. And that's cool because you know it's a challenge for us. And then, you know, the national team, it's you're you're playing against the best players in the world and, and competing for a spot, so everything <laughs> is uh, is very different. Who has been your biggest supporter? My my parents. Um, I I wouldn't have been able to do anything um, that I've done without them. I don't think a lot of parents in the world would or in our country would let their their daughter bypass a, a scholarship to a very prestigious school um, and, and go, you know, sacrifice all of that to, to play professional soccer and and support me in it and, and let me decide that for myself. And 
and that's that's the coolest thing I could I can always say. No matter what I do, it's it's my decision, and they let me be an adult and, and make it, and they're gonna support me no matter what. And uh, it's it's so comforting for me to have that. And I, I hope more and more parents get like that because uh, you know you guys are gonna be adults one day, and you, you're gonna have to make your your own decisions, and and that's gonna be big time. What advice would you give to young players who want to become professional soccer players? Ooh, um, just to work, work as hard as you possibly can, um, do whatever you can, sacrifice, um, and go out and love it. And if you don't love it, find something else to love. I always hear that from Tim. Um, you know, you you have to put everything into what you want to be. If you have these goals, you need to you need to sacrifice certain things to go. Um, make these goals happen and then once you make these goals happen you, you need to set new goals and you know for me when I finally decided like this is who I want to be I was training like a psychopath you know I was I was out here from 3 to 3 to 8 p.m. there's coaches kicking me off the fields and um, I don't like talking about that but it's it's what you know youth players need to do you need to love the game and, and you want to you want to be out here you want to work so hard to get where you are and then you're going to look back and be like I sacrificed so much but it's worth it and I killed myself to be where I am and, and that's going to it's going to make you so happy um, What's your favorite movie or TV show? <sighs> favorite movie is The Dark Knight and TV show is probably The Office yeah. Same oh. <laughs> <laughs> What advice did your coach give you that you hear in your head while you're playing? Which coach? Any. Any coach. Um, I'm going to think about that. Um, oh, there's one thing that's always stuck with me that I've, I've heard from two of my, my mentors. I mean, it's, you know, when I'm in the zone and I'm free, I'm going to be at my best. And when I'm playing, when I'm when I'm thinking too much, I'm not playing at my best. And if I constantly have people in my in my head, I, I'm not going to think for myself and, and play my game. So, you know, when I step on the field, I, I think think to what he said and, and try to play free, try to get into that zone and, and be myself and, and do whatever I can to to leave everything out of my head and, 